here on YouTube or Facebook or whatever venue you're picking us up on. We're glad to have you a part of it. And here we are, just, just what, two days before Christmas. Can you believe that? Christmas 2020. Seems like just yesterday we were celebrating Christmas 2019. But time goes by, they say, when you're having a good time. I don't know about a good time throughout most of this year, but it's been God's time. God's always with us, and I just praise him and thank him that in spite of what yesterday was filled with, today is a better day, and tomorrow is going to be even better. All right, so thank God for that. I encourage you to make this a time of worship and praise and thanksgiving throughout these days of Christmas. And, and let's make sure we do what the intent is, to give glory to God for the giving of his precious son that you and I could walk in life and freedom and victory day by day. All right. Amen. Now, those of you that are usually a part of our Wednesday night word studies, if you're tuning in now, uh, there'll be no live service at Messenger Church tonight. That's December 23rd. All right. Enjoy the time with your family or out shopping, whichever you plan on doing. But we'll be back in here Sunday morning at 10 a.m. for a great, great time in the presence of the Lord. And we're having a marvelous time. I'm telling you, each service, the presence of God is moving. The power of God is being made manifest. And I thank God for that. We love to have you to come. Now, I say this and I say it from my heart. If you have a home church, a church where the word of God is being preached, the spirit of God is given the liberty just to do what he wants to do, then you lock into there. Become faithful to that church, faithful to that pastor. Don't let the devil trick you and cause you to step out of where God has planted you to accomplish something for the kingdom of God. That happens sometimes. People kind of lose focus of their calling, lose focus of the, of the fact to where God's planted them and where they can be a benefit to the kingdom of God. And really, whatever church you're going to, you are a benefit to God's kingdom. And I thank God for that. But be faithful. But if you don't have a home church or you're visiting in this area, I invite you to come and be a part of Messenger Church at 602 Summit Road right here in Fenton, Missouri at 10 a.m. Sunday morning. Now, every Sunday night, we have prayer from six o'clock to seven o'clock. At the end of that hour, we pray for the sick. If there's someone that has came into the prayer meeting or maybe they come just for that very purpose is for us to anoint them all and lay hands on them and pray the prayer of faith. We do that, all right? And that's a part of our prayer gathering on Sunday nights. It's a, it's a time of healing and a time of believing God for miracles. And so I invite you into that. If you want to come and, and just come in, we go right into prayer. It's very seldom that I get into any teaching. I basically make people welcome, thank them for coming into prayer. Then we go and we pray in our own way, whether it's kneeling or walking or sitting in a pew, just wherever people feel comfortable having a communication with the Father. All right, so that's what's happening on Sunday. Now, let's, let's get in the, into the Word of God. Now, if you were with me Sunday this past Sunday morning for our Christmas celebration service, you heard me minister on the subject of He Came. Well, what I'm going to do today is I'm going back into uh, some of those scriptures. And I want to take a little bit more time, if I could, talking to you about the promises of that Savior that was to come. And so I'm going into the book of Isaiah for three scriptures, and then we're going to deal with the fact that he came. I'm going to talk about that too. And I believe that God's going to use this to encourage you and to bless you and to let you know that if God says he's going to do something, he will not fail us. He will always, always come through. But he promised that he would come. Now, before we go into the scripture, Let's, let's think about the condition that the world was in when the promise was given. Now, Israel, because of their failures, because of their disobedience, they ended up in bondage. They ended up controlled. It was a, a dark, dark time in their history, dark hours, a lot of evil, a lot of stuff going on. Now, 
If you really get to thinking about it, uh, we're living also in some very dark days, some evil days, to where the powers of the enemy seems to be running rapid, more violence than what you've ever, ever thought about seeing in your lifetime. It seems like that everyone is out to get someone. And uh, so it's, it's, it's kind of an evil time. But we need to understand that, it, that, that God is God no matter what's going on. God is God no matter what the enemy is trying to do. Now, I, I feel like I need to say this, and I say it from the pulpit. I will not deny the evil that we're seeing. I will not deny the darkness of the hour. I will not deny that decisions are being made, things are going on to try to alter even our history, alter even our way of living. All right. Read an article the other day where a man wrote and said, we need to get over what we've been as Americans for a long time and understand that we don't have the, the rights that we used to have or the freedom that we used to have. We all need to understand that things are different. Now, I, I, I'm sorry. I am an American. I am free. I was made free, first of all, by the blood of Jesus Christ. And because I was born in this great nation, okay, I was born a free person. And I have a right to walk in that freedom. And so I really don't appreciate people trying to rewrite history and take away from the things that God has given me in our great nation today, okay? So, so there's a lot of evil. People are distorting, disrupting, all right, are endeavoring to, but in the middle of it all, God hadn't changed one bit. You see, the word of God said, he whom the Son has made free is free indeed. Now, that freedom is not confined to a nation. God made men free or gave men the rights to freedom everywhere on this planet today. We just happen to live in a nation that that is something we're able to enjoy is our daily freedom. And so I praise God for that. But God is the one that orchestrated that and that and ordained it. So I'm praising him for it. Now, that was the condition the world was in. There was not a lot of freedom for the church. There was not a lot of freedom for the Israelites to, to do what they wanted to do. So in the midst of that, this is what we heard in John 7 and 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Then he said, listen carefully. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Now, that word Emmanuel is a very important word. I'm going to come back to it shortly. But listen to Isaiah 9 and 2. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. Now, I added the people who walk in darkness, I added the word spiritual. They that walk in spiritual darkness will see a great light. So we've got a promise there. We've got the promise of Emmanuel coming. We've got the promise of a light in darkness. Now notice Isaiah 9, 6, and 7. For to us, a child shall be born. To us, a son shall be given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. There shall be no end to the increase of his government and of peace. He shall rule on the throne of David over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time forward. And I like this. And forever. More important word there. Let's go back now to Isaiah 7 and 14. You should call his name Emmanuel. That word Emmanuel, as you know, many of you, simply means God with us. In other words, the word of God is showing us that God has given us a promise that a son is going to be born. He's going to be called Emmanuel. And it means that God is always going to be with us. Now, that, that goes right into the scripture that says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. 
I'll be with you. Here's the word, always. Doesn't matter what you're going through. Doesn't matter what we're faced with. Doesn't matter what the enemy's trying to do. We've got a God that's on our side. He gave us a promise that he would send his son. His son would always be with us. And then he said, I'm going to shine a light right in the midst of your darkness. No matter how dark it is, he said, and he gave us a promise I'm going to send you a son. That son's going to light up your darkness. We don't have to live in the darkness of sin. We don't have to live in the darkness of, of depression, suppression, oppression. Jesus was promised. Then Isaiah 9 said there was going to be a, a, a child born, a son given, and that was going to be a wonderful counselor. Now he, he gave out different words that defines who he is. Wonderful counselor. The word wonderful means cause and wonder. It means superior or or outstanding of its kind. In other words, God said, I'm sending you my son. He's going to be wonderful. He's going to cause wonders. He's going to be superior over all of the negativity and over all of the junk that comes your way. He's going to be your counselor, one that gives advice, one you can consult together. Here we go. Ask, you'll receive. All things are possible to him that believes. Sit down, talk to that counselor. Share your heart with him. Share with Jesus exactly what you're faced with, exactly what you're going through. You may feel like that people sometimes are not paying you any attention, but Jesus, the counselor, always will. This one that is coming will be everlasting. All right. In other words, there's no beginning. There's no end. He's the prince of peace, the ruler of peace. All of this turmoil in our lives, all of this turmoil in your lives doesn't belong there. Doesn't belong there. God said, I'm sending you one that's going to bring you peace. Now, those are the promises. We'll look over in the book of Luke 2 and 11. For there is born, not will be, not will be, for there is born this day, in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. So what do we have? In Isaiah, we have the promise of one coming. In Matthew, the one promised was born. In God good, God said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you my son. He told the church in the midst of their darkness, I'm going to send you a light. And then in, in, in that scripture in Luke, we find out that he came. Jesus, the Savior. Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Jesus, the Everlasting One. Jesus, the Mighty God, the Counselor, the Wonderful One. He came. Get this, my friend. From a throne room to a womb to a stable, the Son of God who became the son of man, made his entry into this world. He came as a peace giver. He came as a savior. He came as a healer. He came as a deliverer. He came as the restorer of joy. He came as the restorer of peace. You're going through trouble. You're going through situations. You're faced with, with, with decisions that you don't know how to make. He came to be the answer to your problems. Isn't that something to praise God for? And so we have a promise. We have the fulfillment of a promise. That's what we're celebrating every Christmas season is that God kept his word. I said, God kept his word. Don't let the devil ever tell you that God lies. Don't let the devil ever tell you that God doesn't do what he says he'll do. He'll do it every time. He'll never fail you. He'll never forsake you. I mean, hundreds of years earlier, he said, I'm sending you an Emmanuel. I'm sending you someone that's going to be with you always. And he showed up. Now, let me give you this before I go. In Luke 4, 18 and 19, we see why he came. I love this scripture. I love it. I love it. And I know many of you do. Matter of fact, Jesus is sitting in the temple. He had a custom. Every Sabbath, he went to church. Hmm, that's a good thought. Every Sabbath, and as his custom was, he went to the temple. He walks up, picks up the word, turns over the book of Isaiah, reads Isaiah. This is what he said. He said, the spirit of the Lord <laughs> is upon me 
the anointing is upon me because he hath anointed me to do what? To preach the gospel, to preach the good news to the poor, not the rich, not the well-doing only, but to the poor. No one is left out. No one is forsaken. I love that word gospel. That's the good news. He come to give you some good news. Well, what's the good news? Old, old song. I once was lost, <laughs> but now I'm found. That's the good news. That's the good news. I had no hope. Now I have a blessed hope. I had no one to turn to. Now I've always got someone to turn to. I was in turmoil. I had a curse on my family, but he broke that curse. He came and he broke that curse. And I heard the news of the gospel. Jesus said he sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. In other words, Jesus said the Father sent me with an, with an anointing, a yoke-destroying anointing to bind up the brokenhearted. Hearted. The Amplified Version said, he has sent me to announce release Woo! to the captives. That word release is pardon and forgiveness. Amen. I was a sinner, but I'm not a sinner anymore. I'm saved by grace. The grace of God is God's favor placed upon me as a sinner. But once I repented of my sins, he forgave me. And now I'm no longer a sinner. I'm a son of God. Jesus came with that message that that's what I came to do. He said, I've come to proclaim liberty. Amen. To set free those who are pressed. To set free those who are downtrodden, who are bruised who are crushed by tragedy. Hear me this day, my friend. Jesus came with all of those purposes in mind. He came. He came. But what is so good about that, what is so beautiful, is when he came, he left. They killed him. He come up out of that tomb. He ascended on high, sat down at the right hand of the Father. That's where he's positioned right now. That's another sermon, but notice this. You men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus which is taken up from you in, into heaven shall so come in like manner as you've seen him go. In other words, he ascended on high sat at the right hand of the Father. He's the intercessor, the advocate with the Father in our behalf. But he said, don't worry, don't worry. The way you saw me leave is the way you're going to see me coming back. He's going to come back on those clouds of glory. I believe, I really do believe we're close to that day. We're close to that day of the second coming of Jesus Christ. It excites me. My, my, my expectation, it is a high level right now that God is about to do something like we've never seen him do. I'm not talking about the rapture right there. I'm talking about what God's about to do on this planet. We're moving toward the midnight hour. That midnight hour, my friend, is an awaking of the virgins. Five foolish, five wise. They're all asleep. They that have the anointing and don't have the anointing. But God's about to wake them up. And we're about to see a visitation like we've never seen before. Right before Jesus comes, it's about to happen. And I thank God for it. So, so. He came, he did what he promised he would do, and he's still doing it, but he's about to come back. I got to go. Oh, don't you love God's word? We got promise, fulfillment of promise, purpose, and another promise. He's coming back. God bless you. God bless you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this great word that you've given us to dive into and take note of. And I praise you for the privilege of doing that, God. I've done it a long time. You know that. But Lord, every day I'm thankful that you're still allowing me to share your word, whether in the pulpit of Messenger Church or somewhere else or right here in social media. God, take this word, plant it in someone's heart deep, deep down. Don't let the enemy, enemy ever make them doubt that you're a doer of what you said you were doer. You are a restorer. You're a healer. You're a storm stopper. 
and much more. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. God bless you. Have a Merry Christmas. I love you. I thank God for you. You've honored me by being a part of this broadcast. I I'm going to be right back here next Wednesday. But Sunday morning, we'll have church too. Love you. Talk to you the next time.